All right. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Brian Mokopunsa, Customer Success Manager here at Kativ Technologies. And of course, we'll be diving into the Vault 2022 Thin Client and Vault Mobile and benefits of it and why you should care. So if uh, you have any questions, I will try to answer them actually more towards the end. So then when this is uploaded to YouTube in a couple of weeks, uh, there will just be more content uh, front loaded. And then towards the end, you can just skip to the Q&A. So, so uh, I'll do my best to answer those at the end. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right on into it. So quick introduction, a uh, quick agenda. Um, uh, I'll get a poll just to see, um, gauge the, the room of who uh, used Vault, who doesn't use Vault, and what version of Vault you're on. Uh, I'll kind of put everything into context with uh, issues with PDM today and how the thin clients and mobile can overcome that. Uh, what I'll go into what is thin clients, its benefits, and then what Vault Mobile is and its benefits. I will be sharing my phone, my work phone's screen uh, to show Vault Mobile. So stay tuned for that. And again, uh, definitely ask your questions at the end. Uh, so again, my name is Brian. I support the adoption of tools and services we provide here at Kati Technologies as a customer success manager. Uh, so if you work with me in the past, um, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, if I am your customer success manager, or if I'm not, uh, if, so, if you're assigned someone else, I'm more than happy to, to help as well uh, and just make them aware. Um, and I, a little fun fact about me, as you may know, if you know me, I love 3D printing and I have a couple of 3D printers at home and I do make the 3D models uh, so I can 3D print them for any random um, usage. And let's go ahead and do a quick poll here. Um, so I'll go ahead and launch the poll. So the first question, this is to gauge uh, our vault usage. The first question is, um, do you currently use vault? So let's see if you use it at all uh, and if you plan to, and maybe what version of vault you are using. So whether it's professional, work group, basic, or not at all, or office, like, or a mixture of the two. And then the second question, do you already use some form of the Vault Thin Client? Um, so if you're using 20, if you're using like Vault 2021, then you're probably using the Thin Client 2021. Um, and if you're not using, you don't have to be using the Thin Client at all, especially if you're not on professional, then you don't have access to the Thin Client. So, all right. So I see uh, a lot of us are using Vault Professional, which is perfect. Uh, this is perfect for you guys. And then for those, and then you're, uh, uh, Actually, most of us are not using the thing client. So that's perfect as well. That's actually ideal for this class or for this webinar is to, to share with you what benefits you have with the thing client. Not only the thing client, but also the, the 2022 version of it. Because if you're coming from 2021, it's just actually going to be more enhanced and a lot. They really put in a lot more of technology and, and uh, efficiency in this 2022 thing client, if you haven't heard already. So hopping from 2021 to 2022 is a huge thin client jump. So let me go ahead and end that poll there. Oh, and I see a comment, cool cartoon avatar. Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, issues with the PDM today. So let's put things into context. So this was after months of talking with customers. Uh, they were all bringing up thin clients and mobile, and they wanted to find out more about um, how they can give access to Vault to people essentially outside of the outside of the engineering and design group. So the first issue, as I just mentioned, is uh, being able to give that information out, but not having them be making changes to the design and engineering models. So get, how do you give them a vault seat without giving them a full vault seat is essentially uh, some issues uh, with PDM today. Uh, second one is, I hear this all the time, is they send it out to purchasing or manufacturing and they are making old parts, old part numbers, um, data that is out, that is uh, just the older versions of them. Um, so this is definitely something that is still an issue to this day uh, that people run into. And this might be, uh, even if you have the technology, this could still be a best practice thing uh, for people, but this tool that we're going to go over today helps prevent that. Uh, justifying more PDM seeds. So just for people outside design and engineering, if they just need viewing purposes, 
um, it's hard to justify for the, the designers and engineers or the managers uh, to their higher ups of, hey, I actually need more to pay you know, more for these seats just so they can view a little file or a little drawing here and there. Um, so this will help uh, overcome that. And then lastly, just being able to view 2D and 3D CAD data on the tablet on the spot, whether you're on the shop floor, whether you are um, just not by your desk uh, and things like that, that's obviously where Vault Mobile will come in, um, but that's, that's uh, one of the issues that people are experiencing today and, and customers too. So what is the Vault Thing Client? It's a read-only web portal into your live, I put live there, uh, Vault data, because um, that's very important that you can see what's the, the latest version of your vault data that's not outdated, which is really nice. And this is versus what we call the lingo, what we call the thick client, which is the, I'm, I'm gonna pull it up here. This is the thick client where you have a full interface and you can navigate inside a vault. Um, that's the thick client. The thin client we're, we're gonna dive into in just a moment here is on the web browser. And I emphasize read only because this one's read only, they only allow you to view. The mobile, Vault Mobile is actually going to allow you to make some changes and then we'll dive into that. Um, so just wanted to give you a little differentiator between the two. And the nice thing about the thin client, let me pull up my notes here so I can make sure I don't forget anything, is that, um, if you have Vault Professional, you already have access to the Thin Client. And uh, let me show you exactly, like let's say you're an admin, um, you would navigate to the C Drive, Autodesk, and uh, let me make sure I'm sharing, yeah, I am sharing the whole screen. Uh, the C Drive, Autodesk, and the uh, server here, the setup. You'd run the setup, and it's very simple, that's why I'm showing uh, this. Uh, and this would be on the server end. You just go to install tools and utilities. Sure, I accept. And then you make sure this is checked. And if it's not checked uh, with a green check mark, go ahead and hit install. And that will run just for a couple of seconds and install the thing client for you. And then you'll be set up and ready to go. All right. Um, so you just need Vault Professional and you need that. And you uh, need a web browser, essentially. So anyone who's connected to the network has access to the thin client. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, again, leave it that in the comments or the chat room and I'll answer those at the end. So let's go into some benefits. So the benefits of this is again, visibility for those non-CAD users purchasing and sales, manufacturing. Um, there's an quote unquote infinite number of seats. So if, as long as you have all professional server, if you have a hundred, sales and purchasing people who need to view it, you, they can all access it as long as they have the web browser link. Um, so you, that's really nice because you don't have to buy 100 seats for everyone. You, you don't have to buy any seats because you, you already have all professional. Uh, and then live data. So it's always being updated. Someone hits save or creates a new uh, version and uh, the people on the other end of the thin client will see that. So that will help avoid uh, manufacturing out of date parts. And there's, and I'm gonna show this in just in just a second here, uh, built-in CAD viewer. So with 2022, there is Autodesk Forge as the viewing backbone. Um, so when you open up the thin client, you can rotate it around uh, instead of Forge. Whereas 2021 and before you would download design review or DWG TrueView. And uh, those would allow you to view DWFs and allow you to view um, DWGs, for example. So this one's more built in. I still would use Design Review and DWG TrueView for uh, printing reasons. Um, but with 2022, if you're just trying to view, you can definitely do that with just the thin client alone, which is really nice and more. So let's go ahead and dive on into the thin clients here. And pull over a tab. And the way to get to it, you're gonna type HTTP after you do that thing on the, uh, the 
the C drive that I showed you just a moment ago, double slash, and you're going to type in um, the server name. So it would be whatever the server name is. I'm going to type in LT Dell because it's actually the name of the server or my computer here. You're going to do slash forward slash Autodesk TC for thin client. And that's it. And then this should give you access to your thin client. And once you hit enter, it's going to look, it should look something like this. All right. So then this acts like your vault thick client. So you have, uh, if you already have a vault username in here and password set up. So if you go to your thick client and uh, it'll be under tools, admin, global settings. Um, it would be under manage uh, access here. Whatever the username and password is here will be applicable to whatever it shows here. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in as an administrator. There's no password uh, for this one here. Oh, and it's telling me I need the right vault name. Right now it's set to vault here. Uh, one way I can change that is actually up here. I can go to Kativ underscore vault. That's like the actual name of my vault. And it's going to refresh the page. Administrator. And now I'm in. So you might notice a difference if you use the thin client of 2021 and older. This is a darker theme. It's a lot more user friendly, in my opinion. And it's very, very just upgraded in general. So you have three different options to choose from here, files, items, and change orders. Um, so let's go ahead and start with files first. Uh, so just like in the regular vaults, you can just see all of your data in here. Uh, right now I'm showing my work in progress and release data. Uh, if I only want um, manufacturing or people using thin client to see only release data to avoid the, um, the download of or viewing of old parts or new parts. You can go to settings here as an administrator and you could toggle that on and off uh, whether they see release or not. So if I hit okay, just for release files, all that green is going to go away. It's only going to show us release files here. And if I toggle um, latest versions of files, it will show that and that goes for items as well. So let me uh, uncheck that. I will actually show everything in this case. And then if we take a look at the files themselves, so we can look at IPTs, IAMs, DWGs, what have you, as long as it has a DWF or DWF file associated with it. Um, so let me click on this. You can see all the properties associated, user and system defined, any history uses, um, where you use of parents and children, items associated and ECOs or change orders associated. And then if we go here to view, it's going to give us part by forge there, a 3D view of the model. This is a very bland cylindrical view here. And I'll dive into these um, at the bottom here, but, but for those of you who don't know the DWIFs or DWFs that are associated with these. So for example, if I click on one that doesn't have one uh, like this one, and I try to view it, it might show a little bit, but if I try to view it, it's going to give me this knocked over coffee mug of, hey, uh, this one doesn't have a DWF file associated. So if I go back to look at what file that is, angle support pair assembly, I can create one either by going to these three dots and update that visualization file. Um, and then if I look inside vault here, sorry, my vault symbol is represented by this piece of paper right now. Um, but if I look at my vault here, um, we can see that it's located here. And if you want to tell if a DWIF file is associated or not, there's a neat little trick. You can go up here to tools, options, and uh, show hidden files. And then you can see those DWFs. So you can see that, where'd it go? The angle support pair. It looks like it does have a DWIF associated, but it might be out of date. Um, but yeah, that's one way you can see it. And these are hidden and these are created every time you like check in a file or you uh, release a file, for example, or em make any major changes. Uh, it will create it by default unless you have that setting unchecked. Um, so I'm going to go back to 
Let me just set the settings back to unshow hidden files. And then let's go back to the thin client. Um, okay, so we want to go ahead and update. We can go ahead and update the visualization file from here since it wasn't showing us. And what this is doing is it's sending us sending it to the job processor. And the job processor is normally a dedicated machine that runs your jobs, runs your um, uh, processes like this, where it can create, you can create PDFs, it runs those, DWFs, it runs those. So if you are a small company, sometimes you can have your own job processor on your local machine. Um, but if you are a large company, I we don't recommend that because you wanna make sure um, that no one's gonna get all the jobs um, like if 50 engineers are trying to create DWFs uh, and one person has it on their machine, the job processor, that person's machine is going to get warm, to say the least. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to search the job processor. It's popping up on the other other screen here. So let me let me share that screen real quick. Screen one. Um, so right here, job processor, if you do a search, a Windows search, and it says it's already running. And if it's already running, you can just look here and it's going to re be represented by this orange job processor symbol. And right now it's idle. So it checks by default every 10 minutes for jobs. Uh, you can, we can work with you to get that lower down to like two or something if you want. Um, but if you can uh, pause and resume it, that will automatically force any jobs to go through or it'll automatically force it to check. So right now it's going to go ahead and run that DWIF conversion for us. So now if we um, go back, let me stop my share and go back to the other screen there. So now if we take a look at this angle support pair, uh, view, it should show, there we go. Now it's going. Now it's showing the angle support pair um, as a DWIF. So we're viewing the DWF file right now, which is a visualization file uh, representation of the assembly file. Um, so yeah, going into these, I'm not gonna go into that. These are, I've shown this a million times, but these are pretty straightforward. Uh, markup, so if you don't have markup uh, capabilities, or snapshot that means you're on 2022 uh out of the box or so rtm if you're uh, if you have the 2022.1 update you will see these markup capabilities uh so just keep that in mind so if you're trying to call out things and save it as a uh, picture you can do so and you can save choose the location and where to save that um you have measure capabilities right, um, with different angles and things like that. Um, explode. So this is what someone without a, without Inventor, without Vault, they're just accessing the thing client and this is what they'll see. They'll see a 3D rotatable model that they can manipulate um, uh, if they need to get a better idea for manufacturing. And then there's also a print snapshot. So if they wanna take uh, an image of this and send it to, or, or, and print it out and walk around the shop floor with it. If they don't want, want to take their, or if they can't take their computer with them, uh, this is another way to go about that. All right. Uh, next let's go ahead. Oops. Let me pull that back up. Download visualization. Okay. Um, and if you're on a 2021, which everyone else is on, uh, 2021 professional, uh, and you want to view this, uh, then you want to go ahead and download. So there's different options here. Uh, I would not download the file. That's like an assembly file, which wouldn't work well without project files. But I would download the visualization file because this one that we just generated can be viewed in design review. So the design review is represented by this green symbol there. And you can do a search for design review. It's again, this one's free. The DWG true view is free. Thin clients technically free, um, but you can have this uh, locally on your machine. 
Um, so this would be something that the thin client user would download. So this would be if you had 2021 20, and older. Um, but this, I like, I like the idea of still having Autodesk Design Review and True View because it, it gives a better printing uh, functionality. So if I go to print here, um, you have more, more flexibility with printing and especially for drawings, which we'll go into next um, for 2D drawings, it will print nicer inside of TrueView um, and a design review here. Uh, so yeah, that's design review. You could just do a Google search for a download. It's, it's, uh, it's a quick download as well. So uh, let's see what's next here. Download visualization, also should download. Okay, so let me open up a drawing next to prove that point. Uh, so if we have the, let me go to the drawings. If we have this Banjo Burner DWG, uh, if we view it, just like we viewed the 3D model, it'll show in, with Forge again. Uh, and you have your same viewing and markup capabilities. No explode, of course, because it's not 3D. Uh, so the nice thing about the new 2022.1 update, you get this print snapshot, which if you're trying to print out directly from Thin Client, which I had multiple requests from customers, this is one new way to do it, which is really nice because um, it prints out the whole thing. And I believe this will print out as white, hopefully. Um, so then you don't waste a lot of ink there. But uh, Unfortunately, the, these edges aren't the cleanest. It uh, does show some information that might be useful, um, but that's one way to go about it. Another way that I do not recommend would be to print through here, but it, I don't recommend it because it's going to look like this. Um, but that was the previous way that, that didn't work. But this, this is a new nice way to do it with 2022.1 um, update. And then the third way that was the old way, or that is still a potential way that I would recommend is um, if you go to downloading this file. So if we go back here and we go to download file instead of visualization, it'll open it up as a, or it'll download as a DWG file extension. And if I go to true DWG true view, I'll drag it over to the screen. Um, this is another free download you can get. Let's go ahead and go to open and this one right here it'll look kind of just like autocad essentially uh, and you'll have more um, printing flexibility which i recommend uh, and then you can go ahead and plot it and we could plot it as to a pdf if we want as well and preview that and it'll print uh plot to an eight by eight and a half by eleven uh, which is pretty uh, desirable so that's a DWG TrueView. Definitely recommend getting that if you work with a DWG or IDW files. I don't believe this takes IDW files though. So just stick with the DWGs uh, for this one. I believe the design review would take the IDWs if anything. Um, all right, and then let's go to, let's go back here and then let's dive into items and change orders real quick. So again, this is read only. So you can actually make changes to these so that's good and bad thing uh so the good thing is you can allow anyone in here and not have to worry about them making changes the bad thing is you would if you want them to make changes you would have to get a, another vault pro seat or a vault office seat um so essentially when you click into one of these you can view um the user and system defined properties any history uh, associated files and the change order or any associated change orders. And then the benefits to the new 2022.1 update is now you see bill materials and where used, which is very critical to the workflow. So uh, definitely get those updates in when you can. And if you have the vault data management or streamlined services with us, we can help you with updating that. Um, okay, so that's, that's what you get to see with the items. And then with change orders, um, you can see user and system defined properties, uh, records, and attachments. But again, you can't make changes to the change orders without Vault Pro or Vault Office Seat. 
You can inside of Vault Mobile, which we will get to right now. So let's go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint. So yeah, if you have any questions on Vault Think Client, definitely leave it in the in the uh, Q and A, which I do see one. Um, does Forge have the same market functionality as the region? Um, okay, so I, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer this one. I was going to save some for the end, but I'll go ahead and answer it. Uh, does Forge have the same markup functionality as DWG TrueView? Um, good question, since I actually brought this up. So I believe, I want to say the DWG TrueView has more functionality. The, the Forge one is pretty limited. It just has the, it just has that, um, like, sharpie marker kind of tool so i i would say the ddwg true view is more loaded uh with functionality to answer your question yeah you only get these tools here whereas ddwg true view um if you're trying to make more drawings and things like that i think it's a different uh, beast here good question All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so Vault Mobile. It is a mobile application, of course, that gives you access to your Vault data, just like the, the very uh, intelligent name <laughs> it's given there. Um, so essentially, uh, it's treat when you access Vault Mobile, this is more treated like a regular Vault user. So you need an Autodesk ID and a Vault license. So if it's someone that's outside of engineering, or design, they need a license. Um, whereas, whereas Thin Client, you do not. Thin Client, you just need Vault Professional and a web browser. Um, and the uh, internet access is required when using it. You can't go into like offline mode. You can save files from Vault Mobile, um, but you can't go into offline mode. And uh, it supports iOS 12 or Android 8.0 or newer. Uh, and it's available in the Apple and Google Play Store for free. Uh, and then let's go into some quick benefits here. So you can view and search just like you would in Vault and download. Um, when you download, you can you would have to export it outside of the app. You can't download it and then continue using the app. It, it's pretty connected to the to internet. Well, so if you were to download a PDF, for example. I would download it locally to the, the phone itself rather than just to the app uh, and then um, make changes going from there. Um, view and add comments to change orders. So you can actually make changes to change orders and life cycles, which I'll show in just a moment here when I transition over to the phone. Uh, you can download files, um, like I was mentioning here, and then you can generate links. So I actually did not show that. Uh, let me just go back to the thin client real quick here. Um, to show the generation of links. So if we want to share uh, this IDW with someone, we can go here to share. And you can either share uh, this file, the location of it with this link here to someone who has the thick client or this link here to someone who accesses the thin client. So if you're trying to share this file with someone Outside of the, outside of the design and engineering, and they don't have the thick client, you can send them this link, and it'll send them right to this IDW. Like I just pasted, copied and pasted here. Uh, so that's what sharing is about there. All right. So uh, and just a disclaimer here: are some things that are not included yet. Um, they are definitely enhancing this more and more. Um, so just if you're if you're wondering if some of these things are going to be in the thin client, they are not yet. Um, but I'll show you uh, what it has, what it is capable of currently. So let's go ahead and transition over to the mobile vault mobile. I'm going to go ahead and stop the share here. Uh, and let me just make sure everything's good. All right. So vault mobile, there it is right there. Um, when you first open the page uh, first, you want to make sure you're connected to the same as the server. Uh, you might need to talk to your IT guy about that. Um, and there's going to be some, 
uh, IP addresses and things you would enter in. Uh, but once you overcome that, uh, you can sign in here just like you would with the vault um, username and password. I'll go ahead and hit connect there. And I could see all my files here. Let me back out here. So this is what you would see just like we saw on the thin client. Uh, so let me go ahead and pull up the uh, assembly example that we were looking at. Um, I think it was here. And let's go to let's go to this assembly here. Uh, and as you can see, we can quickly and easily, and I really like the interface. They did a really good job. It's very clean. Um, we can quick and quickly and easily view uh, 3D models. So imagine you're, if, if your setup is uh, walking around the shop floor with an iPad in your hand, uh, you can go up to you know where it's, what's being manufactured and you can rotate a, the models that are looking around and you can zoom in with just your fingers. I can't really share a screen my fingers, but uh, just imagine my thumbs <laughs> twiddling that around. Uh, you have markup uh, and measure capabilities again. So let me try. This might be a little bit trickier because it's uh, it's an iPhone. It's a small little phone here that I'm clicking, but I was able to get it. Uh, 29 inches for that distance there. Um, and again, you have the explode. Let me move that back. You have the explode capabilities as we saw earlier. If you need to explode the assembly, uh, you have these print snapshot capabilities as well. Uh, if you need to take a picture and send. Um, so you have those options inside of Vault Mobile. Um, I also want to show how, if you look at the bottom here, there's items that you have visibility into. Uh, you can change these from work in progress to review, for example. And you can even change, uh, say, um, uh, designers finished with work, please check. And now it's under review. So you can do that inside of Vault Mobile, whereas then client you cannot. Um, you can go into change orders like this here and um, you can do the same thing, but in the change order realm. So you can submit, um, ready for our next, steps now it's in the work state and then you can see all the different uh details that go along with the change orders uh and again th these are changes that you are making to the vault data itself uh, just from a mobile phone or tablet uh and then let's go ahead and view a drawing file as well as another example uh so if you if you want um users to view a drawing on the shop floor, uh, let's go to view. I just want to show that it's capable as well. So if this thing had dimensions, you can you can um, manufacture in regards to those dimensions and move around and things like that. Uh, and then there's one more thing I wanted to show in the in the Vault Mobile here. Uh, so if I open up a PDF, for example, I can go ahead and Right now it is checked out. Let me, let me undo checkout real quick. All right, so let's say it's a work in progress. You can go ahead and check this one out. And then let's go ahead and open this. And the neat thing with the phone is you can open this and mark up. So I know people are trying to do um, PDF editing in the past. Uh, you can technically, I know it's in its early stages, oops. Uh, let's undo that. It's in its early stages here, but on the phone you can you can mark this guy up. Uh, let's see. And it's this is not going to be clean because I I've already tried it, but but at least it can head in the right direction. I'm just going to put my initials there. <laughs> Huge font. Ten. Twenty eight. Uh, and I'll hit done. And this is where you can save the file to a particular location. I'll just save it to this Chrome locally here on my phone and I'll replace it. And then this is something you can send, uh, you can airdrop it or send it however you want. It's on the phone now, it's ready to go anywhere. Um, 
And then if we view this PDF, it has the, uh, the changes that I made down there um, very sloppily. But anyways, you have that option inside of Vault Mobile, which is really nice. So you don't have to go back to your laptop every time. All right. So that is it for Vault Mobile. Let me transition back to let me transition back to the desktop and then uh, I'll answer any questions we may have and go over a recap. So give me a couple seconds here. Um, so recap, uh, just going into what we what those issues are that we started off with. Um, so now users with the thin clients and Vault Mobile users outside of design and engineering can see uh, and download data without making those changes. Um, manufacturing can or purchasing is only able to see live and released uh, up-to-date parts to avoid creating uh, or purchasing um, out-of-date uh, files. And you, with the infinite amount of seats inside of the vault thin client, you don't need to purchase extra PDM seats. Uh, so you don't need to justify anything to your managers. You can just tell them, hey, yeah, we have 100 users and I got, uh, you can, you know, you can take it, you can take credit for it. I got 100 seats of thin clients for them. Uh, we don't have to buy any extra seats. All we have to pay for are like these 10 um, vault professional seats for the engineers. And then lastly, um, just being able to view the 2D and 3D uh, and even like PDF and things like that, that we just saw in Vault Mobile. Um, while outside the office um, is very powerful as well. And it just shows well um, to, to other people as well. It's just more options. You don't have to go that route. You can always print it out like you saw those options, but there's just more options uh, if you do plan to take get put it on a tablet. Uh, I'll go ahead and um, send these links. Let me go ahead and copy and paste these links into our chat here. Um, but essentially, the first link is the template for what you want your server name to look like. Uh, the second link are the enhancements that you get with 2022.1. Uh, and then the third link are the Vault Mobile um, FAQs that are frequently asked. So let me, let me see if that copy and paste as well into the chat. Okay, there's link number two, and then Vault Mobile FAQ would be link number three there. And then I see some, so I already answered that one. Let's see if there's any other questions. All right, so is the thin client available with Vault Workgroup? Uh, no, it is not, it's only for professional. Um, and then, yeah, you just need Vault Professional as a server. So, so if you have work group, I would uh, consider upgrading to Professional if the thin client is something that you see useful uh, for your um, for your company. And we are happy to help you with that process. We can help on a call with our Vault specialists, uh, and we can talk about how we can upgrade it from work group to Professional with you. Good question. All right, let's see. Um, and then go ahead and uh, if you have support with us or if you don't, just go ahead and put support at kativ.com down on a paper somewhere. So if you ever need to reach out to us um, for installation activation uh, issues, uh, we're more than happy to help uh, with you guys. Uh, we got another question actually coming from YouTube. Can you use the iPad version at home? Right now I can't log into Vault Server at home. I can through my work computer, of course. Um, so yes. So what I just did was at home. Um, that was on my phone. Um, and there, there's, I think we should connect afterwards to the, the person that sent that in um, because there's one or two little uh, settings that you just need to make sure is set correctly. Uh, when I didn't, I didn't show that because it would have taken too long but it, it's inside of the vault mobile where you put in the IP address and you uncheck a, a box where it, uh, where it forces you to, 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 I forget exactly what the thing is. So I'm not going to say it, but 
there's a setting inside of the of the tablet that you would go to go around that. So, but yes, you can use the the iPad version at home. Uh, I think you're referring to Vault Mobile when you say iPad version. Um, and just make sure, but then you also need to make sure you have the Vault server um, installed on that computer, and you're connect, you're able to ping that server from that iPad. So there's a couple things to check there, but uh, we can definitely connect afterwards. Um, you can write down, you can set it into support at kativ.com or my, my, my email, which is brian.monkelpunsek. I don't have it written down here, but um, brian.monkelpunsek at kativ.com or just send it to support at kativ and uh, just say you're looking for Brian to talk to Brian about that. All right. I don't see any other questions coming in. So I appreciate everyone's time. I know that was a lot. Um, I try to squeeze in as much information as I can in there uh, for the thing client and mobile, but uh, that's where Autodesk is at with that uh, as of now. And it's honestly pretty good. It's, it's, it's heading in a really good direction. So I definitely uh, recommend taking advantage of that because uh, that's where the forefront of technology is especially when it's free or something that's already you already have access to with the uh with vault professional so thank you all so much for um attending and i'll we'll see you guys uh at the next webinar thank you so much